On today's Riff Deconstructed, we're talking about the iconic piano part from Jamiroquai's 1996 mega hit, Virtual Insanity. I've heard your feedback on the last few videos we've done in this Riff Deconstructed series, and I wanna do things a little bit differently. So I wanna slow down a little bit, and I wanna show you the process that I go through in order to figure these songs out by ear. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly what I do when I wanna take a song off a recording and I wanna learn how to play it at the piano. So I actually like to start this process away from the piano with just a notebook in my recording. And what I like to do is fill out the form. So figure out things like what's the tempo? How many measures do we have? How many beats are in each measure? So we're gonna start just by writing down anything that we do recognize confidently, and we're gonna put it at the right part in the form. So we're gonna listen to the song on repeat a number of times, and each time we're just gonna see if there's anything else that we recognize that we can put down on here. So we're gonna reach a point where our expertise just won't let us go any further. You know, we'll have some things noted down that we're sure about, but there'll be a lot of gaps that we need to fill in. And that's when we're gonna to move to our instrument. We're gonna validate that the things we know are correct, and then we're gonna fill in the gaps. So first things first, let's just figure out what this tempo is. A metronome says we're at about 90 beats per minute. The next thing I hear is that there's two beats in every measure, so I'm gonna write that down. Maybe you could argue that there's four beats, but I, I hear it as two, so I'm gonna write down two. Another thing that I notice is that this has a little bit of a swing feel. You know, it's not straight, it's not It's I also notice that our groove has some 16th note syncopation in it. I just mean that the chords are not landing on the beat, they're coming after the beat. Now, maybe you were blessed with a gift of perfect pitch and you know what all these notes are. I, I sure don't. But there are some things that we can figure out even before we go back to the instrument. For one, I hear that we're in a minor key and the first chord is the one chord in that key. I also hear a five chord that takes us back to the one. So the last chord in our sequence is a five chord. So the chord voicings in this are rather interesting and that's gonna take us some work to figure out. But I'm pretty sure we're starting on a one minor chord and we're going to a four chord. That'd be a four major chord. I hear us doing the same kind of movement in the next bar too, but we're not starting on the one chord, we're starting down, I think on the seven. So I think we have this progression that goes one to four, and then seven to three. Let's listen to it again. One, four, seven, three, five. So I'm pretty confident that we wrote down those chords correctly, but there's two gaps here that I'm not quite sure about. So I'm gonna put little question marks here for us to come back to it. But there's still some more that we can hear because there's a couple hints about what those two chords are. So I know our last chord is a five chord and I can tell the two chords before it are setting up that five chord. And I don't know what those chords are, but I hear the bass approaching above chromatically. So if it's a five, it's like there's a six in the bass and then a flat six, and then we land on the five. Now, I don't know for sure if these are actually six and flat six chords, but I'm pretty sure that's the bass notes. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of notate them as like a question mark slash chord. One of the mistakes that I see beginner transcribers do a lot is they just sit at the piano and just start like, poking notes to see if they're right or not. And maybe as their ear gets a little better, they get more accurate at poking at notes. But I really like this approach of figuring out what you know and then identifying specifically what gaps you have left to fill. So I started figuring out songs like this when I was 12 years old. That was like 27 years ago, my gosh. I'm gonna be 40. And I did this through college too. So some of this stuff comes easy to me just because I'm very well practiced at it. If you're newer at this though, you're gonna have a lot more gaps uh, than anything else. And that's okay, because we're gonna sit down at the instrument and fill them in. This is a pretty hard thing to do and I don't want you to get discouraged. In fact, I think hard things are more fun to do than easy things, right? So enjoy the process. So we know we're in a minor key and we know that we start on a minor one chord, but we don't know specifically which minor chord. So the way that I'd figure this out is I play the recording, when the one chord comes, I sing it, then I match it. So there's our note. It's an E flat, so we're in the key of E flat minor. So before we go any further, let's just check ourselves and see how we did. So these are the chords that we wrote down. So 
play it with the recording and see. So let's see if we can figure out what our two missing chords are. I'm pretty sure the bass notes are right. We said six and flat six, that's C and B. Now I'm gonna guess that it's a C minor chord, but let's check that. Actually, that may not be right because the key of E flat minor would not have a G natural. So let's see what it is. Yeah, it's not C minor, it's C half diminished. It's a minor chord with a flat five. And that does fit in the key of E flat. So that's this chord. All right, let's see what the flat six chord is. Honestly, it sounds like almost the same chord to me, just with a different bass note. It's like it's that C half diminished chord. It's like we play that C half diminished chord, but we just move the bottom note. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's think about this. It could be a B chord. Honestly, that sounds right. It's just not crunchy enough. There it is. All right, so it is a B chord, but it's a B major seven chord, and it puts that half step on the bottom just to make it crunchy. So the next step here is to go through and figure out what all the chord voicings are, and this is pretty hard. When I'm figuring out the chord voicings, the most important thing is that I figure out which note is on top, because that's the one that your ear hears first. So even if I don't get all the notes exactly right, if I get the top note right, nobody will notice. All right, let's try it all the way through. Yeah, that's it. Okay, but now let's put it with the rhythm. All right, that's it for sure. Let's make a backing track and go for it. So since you like this video, do all the youtube -y things. <laughs> Hit the like button and the subscribe button. I've handpicked this other video for you about Kenny Barron. It's from the same Rift Deconstructed series. Even if you don't know who Kenny Barron is, I think you'll really like that one. It's a fun groove. See you next week.